welcome back to the always reading book club it is your girl kiki reader and we are here we're on the third book in the crash series if you haven't already listened to the first two book reviews for crash and hide those links are going to be down below in the description section once you wrap those up then you can come and join us as we dive into the third and final book expose the book opens up from the stranger's point of view which you know i love when we switch point of views i love it so um they're still in the bed where he's been over laney and we get to kind of hear all of his thoughts about laney so basically he had like a super hard time when laney left to go to seattle and he hadn't anticipated on that happening but he had this like strong feeling of like missing her and he just couldn't take it anymore like he spent time like pacing back and forth in the cabin like just like seriously freaking out that she wouldn't come back and the effect that was going to have on him and that was why he called her back with the lie because <laughs> he couldn't take it now he isn't delusional he does realize that there are things about Lainey that he still doesn't know and of course we know there's some things about him that she doesn't know so it's going both ways with this you know secrecy <laughs> He also wanted to make sure that everyone knew that they were upstairs banging and it was loud. She was screaming at the top of her lungs when she would come, but he wanted people to hear it so that it sounded like she could possibly be involved in something that was hurting her so that that lot the the potential lie could kind of carry. And you remember he bought like the different rope ties and things like that and he had been treating her bad in front of people because he wanted to make sure a certain narrative would stick in the event that they had to change the plan so then we go back to Lainey's point of view and she's describing everything that happened while they were at the general store as well when they get back to the cabin she can tell the stranger is like noticeably grumpy and even says to her after she had stated like you know i really missed the cabin he's like i thought you missed me like he was just on a on a two <laughs> so she was like you know you both go together you know just stop being so grumpy um so she asked you know well, where are the dogs and he told her he had sold them because they couldn't bring them bring the dogs with him and that made her sad because she knew how much he loved those dogs and she had also gotten used to them as well so she was sad about that um, but he wouldn't look at her because he didn't want her to see like the emotions that the dogs brought up. Um, then he took a knife and he put it to her chest and was like, I don't like this sweater because it smelled like chemicals, like her life in Seattle. And so he tore it off of her and then he threw it in the corner. And then he asked her uh, for a photo. I'm sorry. He asked for her phone, which she gave to him with no problem. And he put it in his pocket. And he told her, you know, when she could, um, she would need to like set up a fake email address so she could at least like send some of the pics that she wanted to keep. So the stranger describes a little of his childhood in his thoughts. And he did grow up in a two parent household in Fairbanks to apparently a pretty normal family. Something happened with the belly dancer, but he doesn't go into detail. He just says it brought out his true self. So back to the present. So he, of course, he's going to fuck her rough and hard on the counter. And he tells her she can't come until he bites her shoulder. And she thought she couldn't do it, but she did. So then afterwards, he was still in a mood because she was gone, you know. And that's when he, you know, talked about, you know, how he had been pacing that cabin like a madman. He goes outside to go get some caribou meat and thinks how he can't take all that with him because remember he, he saves his meat in the ship in the shed and all of that's going to pretty much go to waste so he's just going to go over to the animals he also has the thought in his head that you don't feel alive unless you kill something and when he says that i feel like oh my gosh i think he's possibly a serial killer so <laughs> he brings the caribou meat into the uh, cabin he kind of throws it at Lainey and was like, cook it. And she was like, I don't know how to. And he's like, well, you can figure it out. So he's being really nasty and short with her. And I think he's just pissed about the fact that he can't live the life that he thought he was going to, that he was going to be able to do. He thought he was going to be able to stay in solitude, live his life, die alone, no problems, you know. And then Lainey comes along. <laughs> he's falling in love with her. 
and everything's changing you know he had to get rid of his dogs you know how much he loves his dogs like those dogs have brought almost tears to his eyes when Sadie died so everything's changing and he's pissed because he doesn't really want to have to do this change so then afterwards um after he has his little thoughts in his head so after um she puts the meat laney puts the meat down and he showed her the new identities that they were going to be nicole and aaron i think the last name was myers i can't remember um he said they were going to meet up with a cousin he had he hadn't seen in over like 20 years and that he had a job for him doing either like doing like some hunting excursions and she was going to be a waitress which she was not too happy about he chopped off her hair with the knife and told her that she would have to dye it blonde to match the id and then you know in their new lives so apparently he had done all this stuff i guess when she was gone for that day or two he had done all this at the you know why he had access to wi-fi so the stranger gives a backstory again in his mind about how he met the belly dancer so when the stranger was around 12 years old um he had gone to like the state fair with his family and he had wanted to see the dog so clearly he's always had this love of sled dogs and then one day he and he would do this every year right and then one day he goes to a tent where there's belly dancers and he becomes fixated on one of them and she saw him staring and he came over and she came over and she started dancing for him and he was so fixated on her that even when she kind of tried to embarrass him like she did some kind of move or something it didn't work because it didn't he when he's fixated that's it and it kind of scared her a little bit and she kind of backed up <laughs> so his parents come to find him and the dad is pissed because he sees him you know all staring at this woman with such a gaze you know and the mother's like he's okay you know he's okay there's something wrong he's growing up you know he's just being a boy and the dad's like no uh uh because the dad felt like there was something dark in his child so he knew the way to make the boy because he told him you you know you better never come to this tent again and at first the boy kind of was like whatever i'm gonna go but when the dad was like if you come back i'll take away hunting and he loves to hunt so that got his attention and that made him promise like okay i won't come back you know so he spent years you know jacking off to the thought of the belly dancer so then we go back to the present and he asked Lainey to dance for him. And she thought it was a trick because he made the statement, you've danced with friends at clubs before. You like having guys watch you. So, if, you know, she thought it was like, you know, a trap, you know. So eventually he calmed her down, was like, no, you know, it's not that. I just want you to dance for me. So she starts dancing for him and he's getting completely turned on. His dick is hard, but he wasn't going to fuck her. Like that was not the goal he just wanted to watch her but she had such this lust look in her eyes that he was just like i can't i can't help it he just had to give her a hard fuck so he thinks in his head that laney isn't the belly dancer and he isn't going to kill her because husband don't kill their wives and then he chuckled and this is all in his mind so i think i'm right about him being a serial killer <laughs> so we get a little bit more detail into like the stranger's background from his childhood so he used to stay up really late at night to listen to his parents conversation because at night when they think you know when most people think no one's around they kind of tend to tell the truth so he had heard them one night saying that the dad saying that you know he's a little off talking about the stranger and he also found out that his sister was a little scandalous <laughs> and she had a photo of her tits that were all over the high school like classmates phone it was just all over the school the next door neighbor apparently had was having a uh, daughter was having like some type of an affair with the mailman it was just crazy so he finds out all this stuff because he knows how to stay extremely quiet he doesn't move and so he's able to hear everything so 
The next day they head out um, the next morning um, and she brings the obituary for Chelsea um, because she's like, you're going to you don't want to forget this, do you? And she was kind of hoping that he was going to open up, but he didn't, um, which she should have known. So then he told her that he had thrown the IDs and the marriage certificate for Stephanie and Cody into the fire. So she looked sad. So when he went back in the cabin, he got the obituary and I think the a present he had had in a drawer as well. He brought that with him. They get on the plane and they hear that uh, they're having to wait. There's a delay because apparently a body was found. Lainey didn't freak out the way we thought she was. She kind of remained calm on the plane. So then the stranger was like, oh no, he seems so sincere when he's talking to the pilot. And he even made conversation with him about the weather in Fairbanks. I mean, he played it off like really well. But then he told the pilot um, they were stopping off because the guy asked, you know, are you guys staying in Fairbanks? And he said, no, we're just stopping off there, you know, just for a layover. And then we're going to head to Seattle to meet her family. So then Lainey's looking all confused because this is not the plan he had told her. <laughs> and then they take off. So they get to Fairbanks and Lainey goes to the bathroom. She dyes her hair. And while she's in the bathroom, Sammy calls her cell phone and is like, you know, the stranger answers. She's like, I know you're not Cody and I know who you really are. And he laughs and is just talking to her with ease. And then he ends the call when he sees Lainey headed towards him. He tells her, Sammy called you. And of course, Lainey kind of wants to call her back and let her know she's okay. And then before that could happen, a waiter comes over. He kind of dumps her salad in front of her and like some of the salad landed on the table. The sh you stranger, you know, nice controlled tone, but he's pissed, tells the waiter, go get her another salad. He goes and he goes and does it. While the waiter was gone, the stranger plays a game with her and was like, um, who would you want to have dinner with um, alive or dead? So he said his mom and that um, he did reveal that she had passed away from cancer, which Lainey, of course, was so sorry for him. Uh, Lainey says Cleopatra and he asks why. And she was like, because she had two men that were willing to die for her. <laughs> he got mad because he's like what he heard was that she wanted another man. And she explained that she, and she explained she just wanted to know how was it that she was able to get two men to have such devotion to her. And the stranger was like, you have my devotion. I would kill for you. So then he tells her, you can call Sammy back, you know, if you want to. He even takes the phone and calls Sammy back before um, he hands the phone over to Lainey. And um, he, does, he says to her, to Sammy on the phone, before he hands it over, this will be the last time you speak with her. And Lainey talks to Sammy and you can hear, you know, Sammy saying, you know, she's like, this isn't, you know, he isn't who you think she is. You need to come back and da, 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 da. And Lainey's over it. Lainey's going to stay with her stranger. And so she just hangs up the phone. She tells her, bye. I'm okay. Everything's fine. I'm good. Bye. So then she gives the phone to the stranger and she's like, get rid of it. And he throws it away in the garbage um, with their food and they leave. So he has thought to himself that he can't wait to get her alone to tie her up and tell her who he really is. They get to this trailer park place um, where there are like tons of people, but yet it's still quiet. So this is the place where a lot of people that they go off and do um, different expeditions, their family normally, normally will like live in this place. So people aren't there a lot. So it's kind of a no one really stays forever type of a place. But he felt like this was the best thing to do. You're pretty much hiding like right in the open. So Lainey tried to go in first and he like yanked her back and was like, I go in first to make sure everything is safe. Turn the lights on and then he lets Lainey in. And she asked, you know, what happened to Stephanie because she wanted the true story. So the stranger tells her that he was walking along and he saw the real Cody punch the Stephanie woman in the face. After she had um, dropped like the net they were fishing with, she had dropped it. So he punched her. So he came up and he punched the guy, knocked him out. So then the Stephanie woman asked him to help her because he could clearly see she was being abused. Because there was like fresh wounds, you know, she clearly was going through it. So then he took him out and um, assumed his identity. 
So Stephanie, she was a, I think it's called agoraphobia. She didn't like, she didn't like to leave the house. And I think in the previous book, he had stated something about she had stayed there for like two years straight. So she didn't like leaving the house at all. And her bones didn't heal correctly. And so she was always in like this constant pain. So she asked him to like end it all for her. And he agreed. So he had drowned her in the tub, which is crazy because that is exactly what Lanny had thought of when he brought in that tub from outside. That's exactly what she thought. So she needed to hear his demons as well and not feel like the only person who had taken a life. So hearing him know that he had done this, that helped her. Really, she just heard he took two. <laughs> so, But it made her feel better because she had this overwhelming guilt.